Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see everybody on such a beautiful day. If you are a, an elected official and would like to be back behind us here uh, as an elected official in support of the marriage rally, feel free to come on up. If you are a pastor of a church anywhere involved in ministry, you'd like to be up here. Thank you. 
equal. Everyone deserves respect. Everyone deserves love. What we have to do when we approach these issues that are now being called controversies, we have to show passion. We have to show courage. And ultimately, we have to stand up for what is right. I have across this nation as I travel around and I see people. I see people who are making America great. You know, our, our foundation of our country is built on a strong economy. When you look at the strong economy, what is that really built on? It's built on strong families, built on a strong faith, and understanding the basic principles that have made America the greatest country on the face of the earth. And I truly believe that this is under attack, not coincidentally, but there is definitely an agenda. There is an agenda to silence us, to silence those of us who believe in what is right. Those of us who have these deeply held convictions. And when you look at, when you look at the opportunities that we've been afforded over this country all these years, I have to say that we, our vote is the number one thing we've been given. You look at what's going on in the news around the world, you often see that the voice of the people is silent when liberty is first began to squelch. Let me tell you, they're taking away your right to speak. And I call on the Arkansas Supreme Court to stand with the people and to honor their vote. Arkansas, but we went to bat to elect conservative candidates who believe in what God believes in. Check that. 
concept of marriage in the state's constitution, we should be clear that protecting the definition of marriage that is in America's constitution is not intended to allow or encourage discrimination against any group of our Kansans or to cause hurt or harm to anyone based on sexual identity or lifestyle. Marriage, at its heart, is a religious institution recognized by the state. This is the same way that pastors and churches are recognized, but not created by the state. We should also be clear that traditional marriage benefits society. This is why, although marriage is deeply rooted in the religious beliefs of many people, the state has been a guardian and promoter of marriage and its continuation. As governor, I will continue to protect traditional marriage. In the event that the Arkansas Supreme Court allows same-sex marriage in Arkansas, I will work with pastors, community leaders, and others to ensure that we protect our rights of conscience for our churches, businesses, and nonprofits. Together, let's pray for strength for those who support traditional marriage, and let's pray for understanding and peace between us and those who want to add new meaning to the concept of marriage. Thank you, and God bless. Signed, Asa Hutchinson, Governor-Elect. Ladies and gentlemen, the people have spoken, and it's an honor to be standing here with you today and to see that marriage is alive and well in Arkansas. We call on the Supreme Court. We call on them to honor our vote. God bless you.
vote. Now face this. Evil does not become good. Wrong does not become right. And lies do not become truth. Just because you accept it. on this issue. Our Supreme Court here in the state of Arkansas needs to honor the 75% of the citizens of and honor their responsibility. They were elected by those same people who voted 75% for marriage. And that's something that they need to know. They need to realize that it's you that they represent and that they're carrying out justice on your behalf. That they are your servants. And I hope that they realize that tomorrow, and I really appreciate you all so much. My name is Derek Easter, pastor of the New St. Hurricane Baptist Church there in Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Certainly, we echo the sentiments that have been shared with us here on today. Let us take a moment now and go in prayer. We want to pray for the Supreme Court and what will take place on tomorrow. So join me if you will in prayer. You're not supposed to pray in public. Do I have to Lord, we thank you today for the gift of our nation. We realize that you alone rule the world with justice. Yet you place in our hands the solemn duty of participating in and shaping the government which includes those men and women who help enact laws that govern our land. While we know that regardless of what the civil law says, it cannot change the moral law that you have established. But we still come today asking that you will move upon the mind and the hearts of our justices. We pray that you will guide their hearts and their minds, mold them into guidable hearts, fill them with a healthy realization that although they may exercise earthly power, you are ultimately sovereign. You are the God of this universe. You are in control of all destinies, including theirs. Grant them the desire to serve justice rather than convenience or their own personal political advantage. Realizing and recognizing that righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. We pray, God, that you will help them to uphold what the citizens of this state have already requested. But ultimately, we pray that you will give our leaders a 
strong, trusting relationship with Jesus Christ. The good shepherd. That our leaders might in turn be truly good shepherds. That guide their flock that you have entrusted them. Lord, we pray this in the name of the one that rules and super rules this universe. In the name of Christ, the everlasting King. Amen. And thank God. Hi, my name is Ashley, and I just want to thank you all for coming here today. I'm um, being mindful that on Thursday is when the Supreme Court is going to begin the oral arguments on this case. Their uh, ruling should come down within the next about two weeks. So if you will just be praying over these two weeks that the Lord will actually move in the hearts of our Supreme Court and that they will uphold our vote. At this time, I would like to ask anyone who would like, we are going to walk over to the Supreme Court building. If you actually will just go right down here and you turn right, the Supreme Court building is the round circular building that you'll see here. And I just ask, uh, invite any groups and small groups, individuals, um, you can spend as much time over there, but we just ask anyone who would like to walk over and to just spend time praying um, around our oh, Supreme Court. So again, thank you for coming, and uh, just thank you for being here to show your support. Thank you.
because almost every time the issue of marriage has been on the ballot in a state where a state was given the right to define marriage, they defined it as it's always been a man and a woman. Even California voters passed a proposition there to define marriage as a man and a woman. And so when it's left to the people, they almost always define marriage the way it's always been. But when the courts get involved, then you end up with a totally different outcome. That's what the people today are concerned about. And well, there's certainly been some discussion about judicial recall. There's been discussion about the impeachment of judges and so forth. And I, I think those are things that need to be looked at. But I think you have to ask, why are the people talking about such drastic measures as impeachment and recall? And it's because the judges are way out of line. The people know that. And so this, this is a natural response when people feel that their government is not listening to them and they're not allowing them to make their voice heard. And so I think you have to continue to do that as long as the judges and the world are there. Can I get to the point you're wearing? Say it again. Oh, it's a free country, and uh, people are free to come out and voice their opinion as much as they want. I have no problem with that. I'm just glad we have the right to speak our mind, and uh, I support everyone else's right to do that as well. So uh, I have no problem with that. Um, at times, I wish people would let others talk and then have their say later, but that's not what they chose to do. They chose to interrupt at times, and uh, that was their prerogative to do so. Did y'all organize this? Well, we worked with a number of groups. Uh, actually, a lady by the name of Ashley Black worked with Mission America. Uh, had the idea of doing the rally, and we agreed to come. So, 